In the last lesson, we learned how to log in a user by sending a request to the login endpoint and providing the username and password. And our API will then return an access token, which the user can then use to retrieve data from our API. So anytime he needs to access a endpoint or path operation that requires a user to be logged in, he'll just send this JWT token in the payload, and then our API has to actually validate the token. So in this video, we're going to handle the logic for verifying that the token is still valid and that they didn't tamper with it, as well as verifying that the token hasn't expired. Now, before we do anything, what we're actually going to do is we're going to define a schema for the token. Um, because uh, we know that the user has to provide the access token. So uh, just like any other piece of data, uh, if we expect them to send something, it's best to set up a schema. So we're just going to set up a schema for access token and token type and just make sure that they uh, match accordingly. And so here we're going to do class token. And we'll say the access token is going to be of type string. and the token underscore type is going to be of type string as well. And then we can also set up a, 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 a schema for the token data. So the, the data that we embedded into our uh, access token. So we can say token data base model. And then here we did embed the ID. But I'm going to say this is optional for now. And it's going to be a type of string if it is set. So it can be optional and we got to import optional as well. And so that's going to come from the typing library. And then in our OAuth2 file, we created an access token function. And then we have to create a function to verify the access token. So let's create the function and it's going to just be called verify access token. And what we're going to do is we're going to pass in a token which is going to be a string. And we're also going to pass in the specific credential exception. So we're going to pass in uh, what our exception should be if the credentials don't match or if there's some issue with the token. So we'll just store this in a variable called credentials underscore exception. And I'll explain this a little bit later. And so here I'm going to say JWT, right? So we're going to access the JWT library. I'm going to say JWT dot and then it's going to have a function. And if you take a look at our options, I'm sure you have an idea because creating a token, we did uh, uh, encode dot encode. I'm guessing you can figure out what is the specific method for decoding. It's going to be decode, obviously. And here we're going to pass in a couple of things. First of all, the token. Then we have to pass in the secret key so that we can decode it. And then we have to pass in the algorithm that's used. So we can just pass in algorithm. Once again, these, both of these are coming from these variables right here. Not ob it's obviously not a good idea to store the secret key uh, within your actual code. Uh, but like I said, we're going to have a later section where we'll turn these into environment variables so that it's not hard coded into our code. And we're going to store this in payload in a variable called payload. All right, and so this will just store all of our payload data. And to extract the data, what we can do is we can say payload.get, and then we have to get the specific field that we put in. So if I go back to my auth.py file in my routers, and you take a look at my data, you can see that we have a field called user underscore ID, and that's going to get the ID of the user. So here we just say get, and then we just pass in that same exact name, users underscore ID. And we'll say that this is going to be stored in a variable called ID. And this should be of type string. And if there's no ID, then we're going to raise a credentials exception, right? So whatever exception we provided into this function, it's going to raise that. And then we're going to say token underscore data equals schemas dot token data with the ID equals uh, the ID that we extracted out of here. And I see that we didn't import schema, so I'll import that real quick. So we'll say from dot import schemas. 
Right? And so all this is going to do is it's just going to validate, you know, that it matches our specific token schema. Now, it, if you look at our schema, right, it's literally one thing. So it's not super exciting and I made it optional. So we shouldn't actually make it optional, but we'll come back to fixing this in a bit. Um, but this is just going to ensure that all the data we pass in the token is actually there. And so that's why I'm using a schema for that. However, for one actual variable, you don't actually need to do that, especially since we're checking to see if it exists right here. But it's good to always make sure so that in the future, if we do add extra fields, uh, we can also validate the schema here. Now we're almost done with this function. However, there's one little issue um, because we can run into an error in any one of these lines. And so anytime you're working with code that can error out, uh, you want to do a try accept block. So we'll do try. And then I'm going to indent these. And then here we'll say accept. And then we're going to pass JWT error. And this should not be capitalized. And remember, this is coming from the Jose library. And once again, we're just going to raise a credentials exception uh, if there's any kind of error that we didn't account for. All right, and the next thing that we have to do is define one last function. And this is going to be called get current user. So what this is going to do is, and so what this is ultimately going to do is that we can pass this as a dependency into any one of our path operations. And when we do that, what it's going to do is it's going to take the token from the request automatically, extract the ID for us. It's going to, well, it's going to verify that the token is correct by calling the verify access token. And then it's going to extract the ID. And then if we want to, we can have it automatically fetch the user from the database and then add it uh, into uh, add it as a parameter into our path operation function. So here, all we're going to do is we're going to pass the token. And so this is going to be a type string. And then here we just say depends, which has to be imported from the fast API library. So we'll say from fast API import. We're going to import depends status and HTTP exception. So here we'll say depends, and then we'll pass in a OAuth2 schema or OAuth2 scheme. So what we have to do here is, it's going to be a little bit confusing. We'll say OAuth2 underscore scheme. And this is going to be equal to, and we have to import one more thing. So we'll say from fastapi.security import OAuth2 password bear. And then here we just reference OAuth2 password bear. And what we have to do is we have to provide one field called token URL. And so this is going to be the, the endpoint uh, of our, basically our login endpoint. And so if you go to your auth.py, you just grab whatever name this is. Uh, keep in mind, you don't have to name it login, but you just have to pass this into here. Actually, sorry, you remove the slash. So it's just login. And then we're going to grab this variable and I'm just going to pass it into here. And this is kind of just tying everything together. And then we have to define our uh, credentials exception that we're going to pass into the verify access token function. So when the credentials are wrong or there's some kind of issue with the JWT token, what uh, exception should we raise? So here I'm just going to say HTTP exception and we'll set the status code to be a 401, so unauthorized. Detail, uh, here I'm going to pass a string. Once again, could not validate credentials. And then we have to set some headers as well. And so just go ahead and just copy this in. And then finally, we're going to return uh, a call to our verify access token function. And since we have the token passed into the get uh, current user, we can pass it into our verify access token. 
And then we also can provide the credentials. All right, so just to quickly recap, because I know we did a lot and I think some of it may be confusing, um, but what's going to happen is anytime we have a specific endpoint that should be protected, and what that means is that the user needs to be logged in to use it, uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to, uh, well, as an example, let's say that uh, users who want to be able to create a post, they need to be logged in. What we can do is we can just add in an extra dependency into the path operation function. So I can say uh, here, I would just say get current underscore user, which would return an int. And then we'll say this equals, and then we pass in a dependency. So we'll say depends on oauth2.get underscore current user. So this is going to add a dependency, uh, which is going to be that function that we created called get current user. So anytime anyone wants to access a re resource that requires them to be logged in, we're going to expect that they provide an access token. And then we provide this dependency, which is going to call this function get current, uh, sorry, where is it? Get current user. And then we pass in the token that comes from the request. We're going to then run this verify access token in this case. And then it's going to prov uh, provide all of the logic uh, for verifying that the token is okay and that there's no errors. And if there's no errors, then we go ahead and uh, return nothing essentially. And that means that they were successfully able to um, be authenticated. If we do return some kind of error uh, with the credentials exception, then it, they're going to get that appropriate 401 response back. So that's how our login works. It's nothing special, um, but there are a couple of different components that are involved. And uh, in the next lecture, we'll start to take a look at um, starting to protect our specific endpoints so that it forces users to be logged in to actually perform that operation. All right, guys, I made one little mistake. Uh, in the verify access token function, I forgot to return something. And so if you ran into any issues, uh, it's because of this. So what we're going to do is here is we're just going to do return token underscore data. And so what's really happening here is once again, we're going to decode the JWT. We're going to extract the ID. If there's no ID, then we're going to throw an error. Uh, and then we're going to validate uh, with a schema, the actual token data, which in this case is just an ID. So that's the only field, but if you had extra properties or, or extra information, you can pass that in. And then we want to make sure we return the token data so that we can actually make use of that data. And keep in mind, remember, the get current user is what actually calls the verify access token. So when it calls verify access token, it expects us to return the token data. And then when we get the token data, we return it to whoever calls this function. Okay, guys, so I found a few extra bugs that we need to fix. Now, the first thing that I messed up was when we actually set the expiration time under the create access token function, instead of date time dot now, it should be date time dot UTC now. This is important um, because as I was testing it, I kept getting uh, an expiration error, and that's because this should be a UTC now. And the second thing is we want to put this in brackets because I guess it expects a list of algorithms, maybe. We'll put that in there. And then finally, uh, this is also a bug right here because if you take a look at the payload, when we create the token, uh, which I believe should be in the auth.py. When we log in, we pass in uh, the data as user underscore ID and not users underscore ID like we did here. So remove that. And this should prevent us from running into any other potential issues in the upcoming lectures. Sorry about that. I know we ran into a couple of bugs, but that's what happens when you try and copy and paste really quickly. Before we wrap things up, there's one last change that I want to make. Inside the login route in the auth.py router file, um, I noticed that for the response or, or the exception that we raise, if the, either the user's email is wrong or if their uh, if their password is incorrect, um, I used the wrong HTTP status code for the exception, and I can't remember what I actually had it before because I went ahead and fixed it. But I want you guys to go ahead and change the two exceptions here. Uh, in both of those cases to a 403. I think that's a better representation of what we should be sending when the user doesn't provide proper credentials. So just update it here and then update it here as well, and then you guys should be good to go.